we are talking about uh, something which is known as a period measure. We just talked about a period which is specific to certain period. That is, compared with period, you can have a cohort measure. Period measure of fertility uses current information, as I mentioned, information in 2000, 1998, 1996, 2006, or you can even calculate the most recent survey data is not available, but whatever it is available, you are specific to that period. That means particular year. Most of our measures are period measures because this type of information is easy to get. Period measures doesn't tell us what is going to be the true fertility experience of a group of people. Basically, it tells you that if women who are younger, if they are going to have same sort of fertility as their older sisters have, then that would be the total fertility rate. Therefore, one has to go for cohort measures. Cohort measure of fertility measures the actual experience of a group of women who have gone through and completed their childbearing. So one of the examples of cohort me measure is that if we have information about fertility of women who have already passed through childbearing years, it is possible to obtain a true cohort measure of fertility. Uh, instead of describing a hypothetical situation, as I mentioned, that is a specific fertility rate, when you add them up, you are adding experience of different cohort different women born at different uh, times. So we can calculate a cohort fertility measure by looking at the averaging, average number of children born to a cohort of women. Cohort fertility tends to be more stable than period fertility over time. The reason is that fertility patterns don't change as quickly as period rates would display. We have to, but we have to wait until a group has completed fertility to get back to the cohort measure. So the cohort fertility can tell you the mean parity or mean number of children born to a cohort of women who have completed their fertility. Mean number of children ever born is another measure of fertility which takes into account the reproductive behavior of a group of women over their reproductive lifespan. Um, for example, it's very easy to calculate that provided you have information number of children born to women in age X, number of women in age group. The measure of thus obtained differs accordingly to age group of women. For example, this is the formula of calculating mean children ever born. And on that basis, you can calculate for each age group how many were children were born. As you can see in this slide, that women who are 15 to 19, since they have a long way to go, they, are, they have on less than one children per one child per woman, but as they reach 20 to 24, that goes to close to two children per woman. When they reach 20 to 29, it's more than three. When they reach 30 to 34, it's more than close to five. Then they reach 35 to 39, it's more than six, and when they reach in their 40s, it's more than seven. What it basically means that when the women reach their end of their reproductive lifespan, somewhere in the 40s, they achieve the cohort fertility you can calculate from there. And so it tells you that women who are 45 to 49, they on, the, on average they have had seven and a half children. But there is little problems with that. One problem is that all women don't remember that they are births. So one could go, and especially if they're illiterate. Secondly, the cohort fertility measure, of, when you're talking about women who are 45 to 49, it doesn't tell you the present. It tells you the past of women. So that's the problem with the measurement of children who were born. But if, in, if you have data which pertain to women who are uh, experiencing uh, different le uh, fertility level at different time, Total fertility rate and children ever born at the age of 45 to 49 should be equal when there's no change occurring in fertility. Now, fertility, as uh, you recall from the, uh, if you could recall from the uh, uh, 
theory of dram uh, demographic transition that it has it was high in the past in pre-industrial population it is always high why it is high because there is psychological and emotional issues related to fertility desire to be parents desire to have too many children enjoying pleasure from them and the social f factors such as lack of education early marriage family pressure especially in the joint family and non-use of contraceptive then there are economic reasons due to low income children are potential earners children especially sons provide old age security and lack of employment opportunities for women that leads to uh, having fewer more children and then of course there's a demographic issue due to high fertility large pool of potential parents high infant mortality leads to desire for higher number of children and so all these factors lead to high fertility so how can one measure that how many children a woman is going to have you know um, if you uh, if you look at the potential if you go back to the uh, uh, the uh, the definition of fecundity i said that's a potential that a woman can have as many children she can have as many children as she wants but in a situation where woman lives that all determines how many children a woman is going to have roughly a woman has a lifespan reproductive lifespan of about of about uh, 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 35 years between age 15 to 49 but she uh, during that period if a woman has a child every year then she can have about 35 children but that's not possible why it's not possible because what is known as proximate determinants of fertility it depends under what conditions under what situation the woman is living and that is determines for example the slide here shows that the proportion married women how many what percentage of women get married especially in societies where childbirth is confined to marriage within marriage that is known as exposure to reproduction then contraceptive use and effectiveness how effective is the contraceptive use what percentage of women are using contraceptive that determines what would be the uh, her potential how much potential should be accomplished so the third one is prevalence of induced abortion if the woman gets married too many women get married and too few are using contraceptive but if there's in induced abortion highly prevalent that society is going to have lower fertility and so the fourth one is duration of breastfeeding uh, it, it works as a uh, serves as a natural method of birth control if the woman is breastfeeding the child for a longer period the longer period she is able to breastfeed the lesser the probability that she is going to become pregnant these factors determine that how many children a woman is going to have the maximum uh, number of children on average women have had is over nine which is a group which lived in the united states and canada in 1930s known as hut rights but population uh, but uh, as i mentioned before that the rates are different in different countries because it ma it varies on the basis of how much exposure they have to reproduction how much contraception they are using what is the prevalence of abortion and once the child is born how long they are breastfed so in the past not very far, far in the past about only 50 years ago many countries they have very high fertility this is the average number of children born per woman which was seven more than seven in algeria and close to seven in vietnam about six and a half of in iran and about six in china now because of the different reasons as explained in the in the previous slide about the proximate determinants as, as shown in the slide the fertility rate or number average number of children born to women has declined substantially in many countries as you look at these figures that it has on average from six to seven in these countries it has come down to 
less than two in China and Iran, and about uh, three in Algeria, and about two and a half in Vietnam. So what it means that countries or societies can reduce fertility by, by measures which they can adopt, and among them, the four proximate determinants become very important.